So I'll say for the essence of time, I'll uh, cut down my three-hour sermon down to about two and a half, if that works out for everybody. <laughs> well, this morning, um, I want to begin our time together looking at God's Word with a story. It's a very important story, a very deep story that really brings into essence this idea of to keep, to burn, or to keep. Let me read this for you. As I walk the trail of life, I see many sights along the way. I see various signs of life, like trees, birds, squirrels, and flowers. I also see signs of death, like dead trees and leaves. As I continue up the trail, I come upon two piles of wood, one to my right and one to my left. Before each pile is a sign. The sign to the left says burn pile, and the one to the right says keep pile. I think to myself, why would someone do this? Why not keep the two piles together and have just one pile? Curiousness hits me as I decide to inspect the piles of wood. I first check the pile marked burn. I see that the logs aren't just any normal logs. They are logs that say anxiety, fear, resentment, failures, and false self. Who put these here, I wonder? Suddenly, I remembered that I had some logs in my backpack. I opened my backpack, look inside, and I noticed something. My logs said anxiety, fear, resentment, failures, and false self. As I stood there, a man that I didn't recognize came toward me from the other, the other direction. With a smile on his face, he asked me, Are you here to drop off that wood for the burn pile? Uh, no, I don't think so, I replied. Well, why not, the man stated. The pack looks awfully heavy. Taking a step back in anger, I reply, I say, sorry, got lost a minute. In apply, I reply, you don't understand. I have been carrying these logs in my back pack for many years. I just will not get rid of them. I can't get rid of them. They are far too heavy to take out of my bag. So no, I will not get rid of them. In an instant, I collapsed on the ground in tears. Suddenly, the backpack felt like it was a thousand tons. The man approached me, knelt next to me, and put his arm around me and said, James, you have been carrying wood that has been holding you back. Look behind you. You have not traveled that far on this trail because of all of these burdens and sin. They have kept you down. You can't lift these burdens on your own. But with my help, I will help you lift these burdens out of your pack and place them in the burn pile. With tears in my eyes, I look up into the man's eyes and I said, yes, I'm ready to remove these logs. Will you please help me? The man and I worked together to remove every single log from my pack. After we finished, the man took me to the logs marked keep pile. These logs were vastly different. The logs were of new identity, faith, hope, love, healthy and healing relationships, and Christ. I said, sir, what are these logs for? The man looked at me and said, see, when you remove the old self that was holding you back, a new self is put on. These are the logs that, will, that, will, that you will now keep and will help you move forward in this, trial, in this tra trail. Won't these be too heavy for me to lift, I said? No, the man replied, because I am here to help you lift these logs, and I will be with you every step of the way on this path helping you and guiding you on this new path. In that moment, I realized that the logs I am now carrying will help me. When darkness falls, they will be my source of life and warmth. When the floods rise, they will be my raft of safety. A new pack of logs and a new life. The man and I started off on the trail that laid before us. I want to tell you this morning that this is not a story that you can just pull up on the internet and find. This is not a story that you can go into the library, look up a book, and find something. 
this story came from a time in my life where I was dealing with a lot of things that needed to be burned, needed to be taken out of my backpack. Two years ago, while sitting in a room in Atlanta, Georgia, at a Christian retreat center, as I pondered the time that I spent healing, learning more about God and learning more about who James was and is, I wrote that story. One of the things that we that were in this retreat center were required to do on our last week was to somewhere out on the property create a really an altar of remembrance of our time and our journey. And on our property, we had this really nice trail. And along it were different altars from people who were part of this program for years. And this idea of these logs, logs to get rid of, but logs to take on, came to my heart and mind as I prayed about what was I going to do. And I actually I grabbed a whole bunch of logs, wrote the burn pile, wrote the keep pile, and then to this day they sit, one on the left, one on the right along this trail so that other people that have come into this program can walk through and maybe even add their burn pile, maybe add to the keep pile things that they wanted to bring in. Well, the story comes from one of my favorite passages in Scripture, Colossians chapter 3. I absolutely love this. I know the NIV calls it the rules for holy living. And it's a, it's a very important part because Paul gives us some great list of things that we got to get rid of. Gives us a great list of things we have to remove. But then, things that we need to bring on in life. So let's first off look at this burn pile, what I would call the burn pile. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have you nothing to do with have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires? Don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater. Worship the things of this world, because these sin, because of these sin, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. Now, the thing is that this list that, that Paul gives us is not an inclusive list. It's not, this is just it. There's way more that could be added to that. Things like resentments. That's a huge log. <laughs> Jealousies. Promoting a false version of yourself. Addictions. And any sin or burden that keeps you from living a new life in Christ can be added to this list. Anything that takes you away from Christ can be added. But there's a problem with, all, with this list. The thing is that the, the, the things that are in this burn pile are very attractive. The first way that it's attractive is that it's easy to pick up these type of logs. They're very light. They're easy. And, and we, as humans, love to take the path of least resistance. So think about it. When you look at this, how easy is it for us to be angry with somebody out on the road when they cut us off? Very, very easy. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, one of the things on... Uh, TV, one of the things on YouTube that I'll watch every once in a while are those Road Rager channels. And you're right here, rage. Oh, boy, how easy it is for people, for the smallest tiny little thing, to get into a rage. Think about how easy it is to slander somebody, to talk bad about them. I'm, I'm very guilty of that. But these things are easy. Sin is easy to pick up. But the other 
part that makes it so attractive is that, unfortunately, sin and these things can give us a temporary boost. I think of it as uh, like when you're building a campfire, try building a campfire using starter fluid. You put it in, it's not going to last other than maybe just a few seconds, but you're going to get a nice spectacular boom out of it. You know, I remember when, when I dealt with, with slander, you know, it, it felt good to talk bad about somebody, especially if you're talking bad about somebody around people that actually agree with you. Because, because then it gets easier to make fun of them because they go off and start talking ill about them, and then you just add more and more and more, and you get that kind of like, all right, somebody agrees with me. But there's a problem with these type of laws. They may be easy to pick up, but a moment will come when the full weight of these sins will come bearing down on us and will become virtually impossible for us to pick up. You know, as I mentioned in the story, resentments was one of my biggest logs that had to be put on the fire. I carried a lot of resentments. Resentment toward myself for actions that I've done and definitely resentments towards others. And for a very long time, it was easy for me to hold them. I didn't want to talk to those people. I wanted to stay far behind them. I even had a counselor one time ask me, what, it, what would I like to do with all of the bullies in my life that treated me horribly, what I'd like to do to them? I carried so much resentment, I wanted to line them up in one big long line, go up to each and every single one of them, tell, me, tell them how much they've hurt me, and kick them in the stomach. Let them feel the pain that they felt that I had to feel. But that moment two years ago, through the beginning of healing of a very dark time in my life, the full weight of everything that I carried in my backpack that needed to be burned came down on me. And I and it it, it did feel as though in that moment when I realized how bad resentments got me going how much it dragged me down because the resentments turned to slander, turned to anger. It just led to sin on sin on sin. And in that moment, it literally felt as though I could not move. They were so incredibly heavy. You see, these logs are deceptive. They look great. They look easy. But the thing is, if you peel back that bark, they're rotted to the core. And that, those would never, ever bring life. I mean, really, if you're trying to build a really good fire on your trail, if you're out camping, are you going to want to build your fire with rotted, disease-ridden wood? No, you want really good, dry wood that'll sustain for a long time. Things like resentments and anger, the things that Paul lists here, those are rotted pieces of wood that should never, ever be used to try to sustain life, especially a life with Christ. Easy for a life of just earthly desires, but not of heaven. But what about that keep fire, the keep fire? Colossians chapter 3, 12 through 15 since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. 
Well, the thing is, it's a great list. But if they're actually very unattractive, why? Well, remember, the, key, the burn pile is very easy to pick up. Very easy, very easy to get angry. But these logs are actually harder to pick up. But think about it. How much peace, kindness, gentleness can you have with somebody that cuts you off on the highway? Now, it, it's a lot easier to be mad and to scream and yell than to go, God bless you, and go on your way. It's so much easier. Think about it. Like, patience. I mean, how many people have ever sat in line at Walmart be well before they had the we think before they had the self checkouts you get to the store and be waiting in a long line and you're going come on come on come on come on it's so much easier to be impatient i remember that trying to do that to get my license before covid before the uh, before the uh, the appointments i remember sitting in lines in chicago for 2 to 3 hours and i was getting furious but a lot of these things like mercy, humility, gentleness, patience, a hard one for us, a very hard log for us to pick up is the forgiving of other people for when they wrong you. That's incredibly hard because the sinful nature, our earthly desires, want us to get angry. Satan loves it when we choose to be angry at somebody that hurts us. To sit there and say, I will never forgive you for what you've done. You've hurt me way too much. I will never forgive you. And that's why these logs are hard to pick up. But the thing is, is that unlike the burn pile logs, these logs provide incredible life. So think about it. Gentleness and patience. When we fill our lives with gentleness and patience, yeah, there are going to be times it's going to get rough. But we can sit back and say, you know what? It's not a problem. I'm willing to wait. So what? I got bumped from my flight. Now I got to wait three hours for my next one. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Instead of rage yelling at the gate agent that can't really do anything about it. <laughs> but they give life. And the great thing is, is that although these are very heavy to pick up, once we commit to these logs of life, put them in our backpack, they actually can become fairly light and easy to carry. The one log that I had to put on that was very, very hard for me to take on was the log of joy. I could fake happiness, but joy, I was in a dark place. But one of my favorite scriptures, James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, Consider joy, my brothers, when you face trials and temptations of many kinds, for the testing of your faith produces endurance. Consider it, so think about it. Consider it joy when you face trials of many kinds. See why that's a very hard log to pick up? You're telling me to be joyful? When I'm going through a bad time in my life, when I'm going through rough times, I hated that log, pick, trying to pick up that thing. Because I looked at every aspect of my life where I was ready to be done. From being bullied in school, to making bad decisions, a failed uh, engagement in marriage happened at one time. In 2021, I almost left officership through a very horrible time in my life. How could I pick up the log called joy? But the thing is, is that with the help, through things like counseling, Christian mentorship, friends and family, I learned 
that with Christ's help, I could pick up that log. Because then I realized that through all of those problems, all of those times where Satan was bearing down, all those times where I just wanted to stop and end everything, I could consider it joy because I made it through and I'm still here today. That's why I love carrying around the log of joy in my backpack. Heavy to pick up, but once it's in my backpack, it's so much easier to continue having joy, even through the roughest times. Because God is with me. Christ is there with me. That man that I was talking about in my story, you could probably guess who that man was is and that is Christ you know the thing is when it comes to these logs whether it's our burn pile whether it's the keep we don't have to lift them on our own when it's time to get rid of them when it's time to take these sins of our life these things that Paul tells us doesn't ask us tells us to get rid of we don't have to do it alone because we have an amazing Savior that comes alongside of us and says, I am going to help you through this. You don't have to do it by yourself. And let me tell you, I fought him tooth and nail because I said, yes, I can. But there was no way I was going to get up without his help. One of the reminders that I have of Christ, of leaning on Christ during difficult times and, and when trying not to go back, when trying to keep that, that keep pile with me is a walking stick that I receive. We, you receive it your final night at this retreat, retreat center. You get this walking stick to remind you of the journey. I inscribed on there is James 1, 2 through 3. And I see that stick as a reminder that I can lean upon it. When I'm tired, I can lean on it. And to me, that stick is representative of Christ. Because I can lean upon him. He will help me when I'm down. Help me when I'm tired. And remind me of those logs that are sitting in my backpack, the logs of joy, mercy, gentleness, kindness. He helped me lift up those logs. And the thing is, is that whatever logs you are carrying in your pack, in your life, especially those burn ones, you don't have to lift them on your own. When we go before Christ and we say, Lord, please, please help me lift these up. He'll be right there. He will be right there to help you lift them up. Because let me tell you, these logs, no one else can really help you lift them. Others can come alongside and join you, but Christ is the one strong enough to come alongside of us and say, Listen, I already did the heavy lifting for you when I was up on the cross. I'm going to help you more now. Now, I don't know what each and every single one of you are dealing with. I don't. Even those of you that I've known for years. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on deep and down inside. But the thing is, is that if you're carrying any sort of logs that need to go into that burn pile to be destroyed, to never come back again, The easiest part is coming before Christ and saying, Lord, help 
me get these out of my backpack. I can't have them in here anymore. You may sit there and say, well, Captain, that's all well and good. I mean, I got a lot of these things that are good, but there's just one log that I can't get rid of. I've got this log of slander that I just can't get rid of. I, 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 I can't do it. So it should be okay if only one is left in there. In truth, no. Because one log filled with termites will easily go and infest the good wood and destroy those and will bring you right back. So any piece of wood that is left rotted in your life has to come out. And it can only be done through the blood of Jesus Christ. Just a few moments, we're going to sing a beautiful song. Nothing but thy blood. Jesus, see me at thy feet. You alone my need can meet. Think about it. You alone can take care of this rotted wood. Get it out of my life so it never comes back. Because of your blood. See my heart, Lord, how I grieve. I never cried more in a 90-day period than I did two years ago. Crying before Christ and, Lord, I feel, finally, I feel, I understand what I've done. I understand. challenge you this morning that as we sing through this song, we'll sing all three verses. Come forward. Consider the this place, that burn pile, that place. It, it's filled with the flames of the Holy Spirit ready to take care of that rotten wood. I urge you, come forward. Give those piles of wood to Christ this morning.